Early last year, I came across an American philosopher that was touted to be the most conscious man alive. This guy's name is Ken Wilber. And since then, I picked up a few books from him, including uh, A Brief History of Everything and Cosmic Consciousness and a few others. I've skimmed through them and I was instantly hooked. He, his teachings on holism, consciousness in general, and just his integral theory really made a lot of philosophical concepts click for me. And as I researched more, I found uh, something interesting. Many of you know David Data, the author of The Way of the Superior Man, and Mark Manson, who is the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. So both of them were former students of Ken Wilber, and David Data clearly went on to use what he learned to help explain uh, modern sexuality and masculinity in his books. And Mark Manson had a more interesting story where he saw the rise and fall of Ken Wilber. I read on uh, his blog, you can probably find it somewhere, it's called The Rise and Fall of Ken Wilber, but uh, Mark Manson was an adamant student of his. He was really loving what he was learning. He was supposed to go to some seminar or workshop, and out of nowhere, Ken Wilber kind of turned on his audience. He said some weird, questionable things, and then he kind of just disappeared from the scene. And the long, long story short of Mark Manson's article on this is that even the most conscious beings are still human. We still have egos. And so Ken is now back in action. He's showing up, up on some niche podcasts. I would recommend you go and give some of them a listen because they are very intriguing. And I feel like if you like my content, you'll like theirs quite a bit. It's a lot more stimulating than mine is just because I haven't reached that level of thought or articulation yet. And even though Ken Wilber did make some questionable remarks and he turned on his audience, there's still a lot that we can learn from him. It's the same thing with Alan Watts where, uh, like Alan Watts, many of you know of him, but some of you don't know that he died or he was a victim of alcoholism, right? So he drank alcohol and a lot of people have uh, different perceptions and perspectives around alcohol. But the, the point is, is that the medium and the message are separate and that even spiritual people are human too and they have their vices and they're battling with them and in my opinion alan watts's alcohol problem still aligned with his philosophy and so without going too deep into this i would encourage you to uh, research these things for yourself follow your curiosity and question things don't form hard set beliefs on these things that most people would label as bad because we live in a world of relativity and there are no absolutes except for the absolute. And so the purpose of me framing this entire video this way is that I want to introduce you to a concept of Ken Wilber and what he calls a holon, H-O-L-O-N. A holon is the unit of everything. It is both a part and it is a whole, like how an atom is a whole in itself, but it is also a part of a molecule or how the molecule is a whole but it is also a part of a cell and then going all the way up about humans and how they are holes in themselves but they are also a part of society society a whole part of a culture culture a whole part of a nation nation world world galaxy galaxy cosmos cosmos god and so they span in infinite directions and this really helps paint a picture of um, what some people call relativism or relativity, where everything is connected, right? Everything, the thing that joins these holons together is relationship. So as Alan Watts would say, existence is relationship and you are smack in the middle of it because humans are not only a part of society, but I'm a part of this room. I'm a part of a family. I'm a part of friendships. Uh, wood is not only a part of a tree. It is part of a chair. It is used to build houses. And so we can start to paint a picture here that holons or really anything ideas figments of consciousness units of thought is what alan watts would call them these are the building blocks of creative problem solving and this is not only limited to things that are material or tangible ideas are also holons thoughts emotions they are holons they are part of a whole and a whole in themselves and this is how humans make sense of the world we create limits or distinctions in this case they're called holons and how these distinctions work together and how they're very context dependent or goal dependent. And they're very useful when you start to actually notice these distinctions or holons, like with an emotion, how can you follow that relationship to its source and understand it on a deeper level so that you can overcome that emotion if it's like a negative one. And so this is best understood through philosophical contemplation, just letting thoughts trigger thoughts and going down 
a rabbit hole of curiosity and discovery. So this is a practice that you can do on your own, but we can do one right now. Let's say the hole on that I want to choose is honey. So if I want to dissect that or just understand it on a deeper, bigger picture level, I can use my mind to follow it. So there's the process of making honey, the bees associated with pollination, the beekeepers, and if they are making a living wage, whether any harm is being done to the bees, the manufacturing and distribution process of the honey, how the honey impacts human health when consumed, and onward toward infinity. You can take any single one of those words in that list, even the bullet points themselves, and just start connecting dots. And so in business, as an example, the one person business that we talk about, you are a whole that includes your interests. Your interests are part in a whole of you, but they are also a part in a whole of your niche. And then your niche is a part in a whole of the market. And then markets are kind of parts and holes of social media. And so if you're struggling in any domain of life, that usually means there's a problem, right? That you're struggling through and you can usually pinpoint that problem and you can start to zoom out and see the bigger picture of how it connects with other things. And so this is why multi-perspectival understanding and open-mindedness is so important is because it allows you to solve creative problems by connecting the dots. This is something we're going to go a lot more in depth into in the next video, which is going to be called like the greatest trap of the 21st century, which is closed mindedness, cheap dopamine distraction, etc. So now let's get into the interesting stuff, which is modern enslavement or society as a pyramid scheme. Nobody. I want to be trained into a job I hate, work for 40 years and get angry at a TV until I die. 90% of the population does exactly that. Wake up. It's not too late. So notice how holons are hierarchical. They transcend and include one another, like how humans or the emergence and, and they emerge as well, right? So something emerges and then it transcends and includes what is under it. So a human, for example, transcended and includes animals, right? We include the physicality and survival nature kind of in a metaphorical sense, the physicality, yes, but the, the survival is conceptual in our case. Of course, we have physical survival, but we also uh, include conceptual survival and spirit emerged, right? That is the main difference is, is spirit emerged and humans have the ability to, uh, sense it, which is pretty much the connection of minds through the intangible, like how a sports team has team spirit and they share that spirit or energy, uh, going into a game and it allows them to win. Like if they have a low spirit, low team spirit, and another team has high team spirit, you'd be surprised in how much the game can be swayed in any direction of winning or losing. So everything is structured as a hierarchy and there are two types. The first are dominator hierarchies, which is what gives the word hierarchy a bad reputation. So these consist of pyramid scheme esque structures. And then the second are natural hierarchies or actualization hierarchies, which is an order of increasing wholeness, such as particles to atoms, to cells, to organisms, or letters to words, to sentences, to paragraphs, the whole on one level becomes a part of the whole of the next. So you can see the wisdom in how society kind of mimics this hierarchical structure, but society would fall under the definition of a, a dominator hierarchy. And of course this is context dependent, but in like when we think of society, this is what we think about. And so societal entities like public schools or, or the parts that make up the whole of society, like public schools, government, corporate jobs, and even some religious institutions, which is more culture, but still part in a whole. Those are also structured in this way. So it's hierarchies within hierarchies. And the main thing with this is that there are more people with less power at the bottom, and then there are less people with more power at the top. And so in a true pyramid scheme, there are investors at the bottom that enable this power distribution. So you climb this ladder in any given situation if you're trying to climb the ladder, like some people aren't trying to climb like the religious ladder, right? A lot of people aren't trying to become pastors, but in, in the sake of like a corporate job or going to school, you're, you're taught to climb the ladder through hard work and usually manual labor, just hard, hard work. But it's going to be close to impossible to reach the actual top of the pyramid if you go about it this way. You're usually going to get stuck in one level because if there's 10 people at the top and a million people at the bottom, how are you? Those are just bad odds. And so the people that want to break out of this pyramid scheme as structure have to create 
their own, right? They have to start their own business. They have to start their own actualization hierarchy or create their own actualization hierarchy to escape a dominance hierarchy. Because the thing with this is that these are created every single day, right? They, they transcend and include after creative emergence. And so in, in these pyramid schemes, yeah, money plays a role, but money isn't the biggest problem. The people at the bottom of these societal pyramid schemes are not investing money. Some of them are, but they're investing attention. So since humans survive on a conceptual level, and if you identify or you like all that you know and all that you believe is, let's say, the job title that you adopt, you're going to work to survive that identity with your attention, right? Like, for example, it doesn't exist unless there is enough attention to give it life. So in the case of like religious ideology or a business model, like there could be a business model out there that we have no clue about because no one has actually done it or spread the word so that there is attention given to that business model to make it seem like it exists and it is something tangible that other people can go into. But when people identify with their job title or their religion or something else, it is upheld through attention. And if that attention is threatened, like if if you, if the attention is threatened, then the existence of that thing is threatened and you are going to feel threatened. Like if someone says, oh, I don't like your sports team and you get threatened, like you actually have a physical survival response is what I'm saying here. That is what I mean. And you are going to defend that belief over and over and hardwire it into your brain. When in reality, if you just zoom out, gain a bigger picture, your those problems mean absolutely fuck all. So it's safe to say that power in our modern world comes from attention. We're talking about external power, but we're also talking about internal power. So being able to actually control your own attention. And so another pattern to note here that we've talked about before is that these hierarchical structures also present a hierarchy of goals that help frame our attention or focus our attention or order our mind. And with just a world of overwhelm, uncertainty and like insecurity, the masses flock to the thing that is going to be most likely to heal that uncertainty or order their mind, which is usually one of these external hierarchy of goals like climbing the corporate ladder because they don't have clarity on anything else they can do. They haven't been exposed to another potential path that makes sense and have been given clarity on how to actually reach that goal and take action on it. So they either believe it's impossible or it's just not a possibility for them. And so they go to the thing that has just been ingrained in our minds of what we should do and focus our attention on throughout the entirety of our lives. And so this is the definition of modern enslavement. I don't believe that like someone at the top is just planning being a puppet master. I just it's it's just human nature and how nature is structured in this hierarchical manner and how we plan to focus our attention and over time these things becoming more and more normalized or conditioned into our brains to the point where we are born as slaves unless we take it on ourselves to free or break those chains because social conditioning since the day you were born narrows your mind to see the world the same as everyone else people have to be on the same page. And so it becomes automatic for us to invest our psychic or mental energy into these hierarchy of goals, not only to help maintain them, because, oh no, if society collapses, then we all collapse. It's not just going to collapse out of nowhere. But you see what I mean is that it's like, well, someone has to do this job. Someone has to do this. And it's like that this is what creative problem solving is for. If people actually woke up and wanted to create a better future for themselves and they decide not to go the traditional route, then they're going to have to solve a problem. And if enough people do this, then the universe will correct itself. We may go through some bad times, but from a universal perspective, when you look down, it doesn't really matter. It's just a part of the process of life, birth and death. The collective societal vision for your future is to get good grades, maybe get a high paying job, watch TV to ease your mind and maybe retire happily at 65 both with the unconscious seeking of status, survival, and approval. And so eventually, with the social conditioning or just conditioning in general, all of this stuff becomes habit and we go on to mimic others, right? We become a product of others and we chase these status games. We spend our money on the fancy cars. We invest our attention all day to make that money back. And we never think to consult or create and then consult 
our own values, vision, wants, needs, and potential impact on the world. So we escape this modern enslavement, one, by becoming aware, which I'm making you aware of right now. And then the second thing is by creating your own actualization hierarchy to order your mind and create a better future for yourself and those around you because an actualization hierarchy will present a series of goals, which are problems and increasing in creativity along the way and fulfillment and impact along the way that will potentially spread to other people throughout the world. So you have to work your way up and those the goals imply problems, solve the problems over and over again. And that is what you invest your attention in to help not only change your own life, but then let that go on to impact other people as a whole. And so you can opt for doing nothing. You really can. You can be a sheep. You can be an NPC, whatever, however people label it. You can opt for doing nothing, but you have to understand that you are a human and that you are not going to escape survival. If you opt for doing nothing, you are automatically a slave. You don't have to tie a negative connotation with slave, right? That's not necessarily a bad thing in certain cases. It can be, it can't be. Just don't take what I'm saying as absolutely literal in the, the same interpretation that everyone is going to have like a slave from a thousand years ago. We're talking metaphorically here in terms of the mind, not physicality. So I've been working on this for a long time. This is going to be called the focus formula and it is how you take back control of your life. So let's look at the graphic I made for this one. I'm proud of this one, but we'll dive into all of these steps right now. Just screenshot this if you want to have a way of remembering what we're going to talk about right now. If you don't know what you want, you will be told what you want and you will believe it. So unless you have dissolved your ego completely, entirely, it doesn't exist, and you plan to live out in the woods like a monk with no human connection whatsoever, then you're going to need a purpose. And even then, humans still have a purpose. Your purpose then is peace and you are just doing that. So since success is relative and dependent on a hierarchy of goals, you need to create your own. So let's create the structure to order our minds and create a good life for ourselves. So the first thing we have to talk about is purpose. And the reason uh, I'm creating this mainly and a lot of why I do what I do is because mo what most people say in books and stuff, it just doesn't really make sense, right? It doesn't make too much sense when people say, oh, you need a purpose. There's no like how, how do I find my purpose or something like that or uh you like you understand what a purpose is but you don't really understand what it is you know what i'm saying so for the sake of simplicity purpose one there is not only one purpose you don't have one purpose right so there are lesser and greater purposes and you have to you have to achieve one purpose in order to unlock the next so to make this as simple as possible a purpose is a goal and a goal introduces a problem and so your purpose is the most pressing problem in your life right now. If you have done absolutely nothing with your life, your purpose is not to spread love and be selfless and good to the other to the world that it just doesn't work that way. If you haven't self developed and self transcended, then it's impossible to be truly absolutely selfless. So sit back and think what is your purpose right now? What is the problem? or the pain that you have been avoiding confronting. If you're overweight and you need more energy and that's really dampening your life, right? Like you can't walk downstairs, you can't walk and keep up with your friends, uh, you can't even work a job, like specific jobs in order to make more money, then that is your purpose and you need to laser all of your attention in on that and solve it with what we're gonna talk next. But that is the thing. That is your main goal. That is your North Star at the moment. And all of your actions will be aligned with that, whether it be the food you eat or just the choices you make, whether you go on a walk or you sit on a couch. And the thing with this is, is that you really have to sit and understand how that problem or pain is spreading into the rest of your life. You have to become conscious of that in order to get absolutely fed up with where you are. And then that energy, that purpose will be much easier to one, it will fuel you in the morning and you want to get out of bed, but you have to get to that point. You have to sit with it and marinate in it and stop ignoring the pain in your life. Or just another example is like mine. I don't know if this was my first purpose, but I, <laughs> as a kid, I feel like a lot of you can relate. I was just tired of not being able to get girls, even though I wasn't trying, right? That's like every young dude's thing is you want to get girls. And so 
my first thought, like when I went through my first breakup, it's like, okay, I'm going to get back at her for, and just go to the gym and get jacked. Right. And so that's why I went to the gym is because the biggest pain in my life (laughs) as a kid, it's funny now thinking back on your past purposes, but that was the thing is I went to the gym because there was a big pain in my life and I wanted to solve that. And the thing with this is, is that's a lesser purpose. But once you start solving that, and once you do eventually solve that just with time, it's not even immediate. You may not know if it's solved or not. Then the next purpose presents itself because you're just slowly and consistently solving better problems for yourself. So remember this is that one problems don't ever go away. They just get better and they get more fun to solve, right? That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing here is we're just constantly solving problems or avoiding problems. And that's the cause of pain. So we're either leaning into the battle, the conflict, the problem, or we're sitting back and we're marinating in it and we're just not moving. Or uh, aside from those two, we are in the present moment or we are meditating and we are practicing and getting ready for that next round of heat, which is problem solving. Life unfolds in chapters like a book and each chapter presents a purpose that the next chapter leads into. And you will feel lost heading into new chapters of your life. Your purpose isn't just going to be read of readily available during the next, like after you solved the first one or after you completed the first purpose, the next one isn't going to show up. You're going to feel lost. We've all gone through this and it's normal. You just have to sit with it. And this is a time where you would practice presence, mindfulness, and other things in preparation for that next round of intensity. So if you aren't making progress, then you are preparing for the next round of making progress and you have to be okay with that and you have to sit with it and self-reflect to understand, okay, what, like getting hints at your next purpose. It's like pieces of the puzzle, right? Because you only know, you don't exactly like know what a problem is right away. Maybe bugging you for a bit and you don't know what it is unless you self-reflect on what went wrong and what went right in your life. It's like, I may not know where I want to move next, but if I reflect on my past and think about the places that I've been on vacation to, or I've gone and visited and I can get a little inkling of like, okay, I want to live in a place that's a big city. I want to be able to walk in some places. This is how you create a vision for your future is you reflect and you start to piece together pieces of the puzzle based on your past mistakes and based on what went well. So from your mistakes, you understand, okay, I don't want to make that mistake again. And you can move in a better direction. Like if I blow a bunch of money on a compulsive purchase, like a car, and then I can't afford anything for like three months, that was a mistake. And then it also presents a problem that could potentially be your next purpose or something that you need to solve, right? So if I can't afford the lifestyle that I want to live, then I need to make more money. So I need to start a business, right? I need to do, or I need to increase my skill set in order to get a better job, right? It, it allows me to make progress on something that I want and can be enjoyable if I have clarity on how to do it. And so if I start a business or I, and then those present subsequent problems and then you have to solve those, you have to lean into them. If I don't know how to build a business then I need to learn. If I know and I haven't done anything, then I need to act. Like all of this stuff is so simple. If you just get out of your head and understand, here's a problem. I need to solve it. I need to also learn how to solve it. And then I'm going to solve it. And so the next time around that, like there are no right or wrong actions here, right? Where if I want to do something so surface level, so status based, like starting a business, making a lot of money and getting a good car, then I'm going to do that. But then I have to self reflect and see if that was a mistake because I can always come back and correct it. I can sell the car. I can make a better decision. I can restructure my business. I can restructure my lifestyle. I just need the control to do that. And if you aren't able to do that, then that's a problem. Solve it. If you have a job and you don't have any time on your hands, that's a problem. Start a business, do what you have to do. And so if you're absolutely lost, you're just absolutely lost with this whole purpose stuff, then you need to ask better questions to yourself because questions dictate the quality of answers quality of answers dictate the quality of your life. And so use these questions below as attention anchors, right? Hold them in the back of your awareness because these answer, these questions aren't answered with time. I don't think any questions are answered almost immediately, at least meaningful ones where you actually gain knowledge because you have to make mistakes and let struggle and pain lead to answers. So ask the questions to yourself as we go about them and then experience life, self reflect and see, okay, in alignment with these questions, what, answers are starting to piece together from what I just experienced in life. What do I really want out of life? What is important to me? 
What is the highest version of myself? What does my ideal day look like? What do I have to accomplish in order to get there? Does that solve a problem in the world? And what product or service aligns with both? What is the next phase of my purpose? Write these down. So after purpose, we have process. We need to gain clarity and understand how to achieve whatever purpose we have. Repeat the boring fundamentals. That's how you get results. But realize they aren't boring. A sushi chef spends years perfecting the preparation of rice. A tennis player obsesses over the angle of their serve. Mastery sets you apart in a world that can't see beyond the surface. So what is the process that is going to allow you to achieve your goal? So every goal is you, if it's not like immediate, like me saying this next word as a goal, if it's further away from you, then you need to gain clarity by attaching a string of goals to it, like a quest in a video game that helps narrow your attention, block distractions, and gets you obsessed with solving it. It gives you clarity, it orders your mind. And so from those deconstructed goals from your purpose, let's say my purpose is I need to just get fit in the gym, then what's the process? Goal number one is I need to learn how to go to the gym. Goal number two is I need to understand uh, what I actually need to do. What food do I need to eat? What equipment do I need to buy? And if my goal is specific, right, which we'll talk about in a bit, like gaining 20 pounds of muscle in my first year, right, I have to learn in order to understand and gain clarity on that goal and understand what's actually possible, and then align all of my actions with that goal and execute as a process, repeating the boring fundamentals. So you need to study the principles of these things in order to actualize or achieve your goals. And so you also have to understand that this process is going to change with time and as you learn and experience more because the process of mastery or just anything like acquiring a skill, it comes in stages of beginner, intermediate, advanced, and possibly even more in between that. Like a beginner in the gym is not gonna be doing the same workouts as an intermediate or an advanced lifter in the gym. Same as with business. You're not going to be hiring employees as a beginner. You're going to be acquiring skills, learning direct outreach, learning direct response marketing, understanding how to grow on social media, understanding what you want to talk about, creating your niche, et cetera, et cetera. And then intermediate is more so like maintaining that. We talked about stage one through three creators in the one person business roadmap. So that's an example, but you see what I'm saying here. And so every stage will have its own lever moving actions that you need to take on a daily basis in order to bust through your purpose. And if you need help with this, use my power planner. It's free, download in the description. It'll help you take your vision for the future, break it down into yearly, monthly, weekly, and daily goals with priority tasks. And that's what we're talking about next is priority, making better decisions. So the best way to frame your actions, whether it be on a daily or even like a higher goal, like a monthly goal, is performance versus vanity. So we're favoring performance here. So instead of trying to gain uh, 50 followers a day, which if you've been in the social media game, you know that as a beginner, that's kind of like iffy. Like it's, it's not guaranteed, right? You don't have control over it. So your mind is much more likely to become disordered and overwhelmed and anxious about actually taking action. So what you can do instead of trying to gain 50 followers is writing 1000 words a day and of course this has to be aligned with what you're actually doing or it can be write three high quality tweets a day or one instagram post a day and 20 replies under an account to get more followers to your actual page and so this is such 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 a big realization is that you at this moment in your life are a manifestation of your past choices all of them have compounded into who you are today and your future self is going to be a manifestation of the choices you make from this moment on until then. And so making better decisions comes much easier when you have a purpose and process to frame your attention into and make decisions in alignment with. So the first thing you do to start making better decisions is to bring your purpose to the top of your mind. This will help you filter signal importance from noise distraction. So if it isn't conducive to achieving your purpose, then it isn't important unless you've been convinced that it is by someone else. So the next thing you can do for making better decisions is gaining multi-perspectival understanding. So you can do this in many different ways, and we've talked about this before, and we'll talk about it more in the next video, but for the sake of brevity, because this video is already getting really long, is uh, to adopt the perspective of the highest version of yourself right? What do they look like? What do they want to do? 
with their life. You have to have a vision for your future and you have to adopt the perspective of that person. You have to transfer your consciousness into that person and see what decision would they make. Like if I'm a bodybuilder, I can pretty much understand why a bodybuilder would decide to eat chicken and rice aside from going out. It's because they have a, a goal to achieve, a meaningful goal to achieve, a purpose. So how can you view the situation that allows you to perceive it in a way that is conducive to action? And that's the thing, is to perceive a situation in a way that allows you to act in alignment with your purpose. Problems are only problems if you interpret them as such from your narrow perspective. If you don't feel like getting out of bed, zoom out and see your problem for what it is. There's some people that don't have legs. They have to be let out of bed. Are you like, they don't give a fuck if you don't feel like getting out of bed. They can't even get out of bed. There are people that don't even have a bed or food to cook and eat in the morning. So you have a purpose to actualize and you need to perceive the situation in the way that allows you to act to actually actualize it. So do that. So a note about this, the, the focus formula, the little graphic there that we created is that this does not only apply to your life. This applies to every single goal you plan to actualize. If you're working on a project, right, or you're writing an article, it's the same thing. You need a purpose for that article. You need a process for writing it and you need priority actions to take. This is like a global framework for framing your attention and eliminating distractions and not having all of these problems that are unimportant, their noise, distract you from what's important in your life and actually impacting the world on a deeper level. So this is, that image is your reality, okay? You need to internalize that and you need to sit with it and marinate in it and understand the good and bad of not achieving it. You have to understand what is going to happen if I do not achieve this purpose. And it's not pretty at all. Observe, just, just sit and follow a rabbit hole into the worst possible scenario of where your life could end up. And then also do the opposite, the flip side of the coin. What is the best case scenario of if you actually actualize this purpose and then the next and then the next and then the next, what will happen? Where will you be in life? And then dance between those two as you're going about life. And if something else pops up to try and distract you, then you need to sit with it and you need to filter it through a purpose filter and understand, okay, is this important? And how am I going to act according to this problem that just showed up? And so typical distractions like social media, the news and other things, they don't fucking matter in your life. And the reason they matter to a lot of people and they base their identity around that is because they do not have a purpose to bring their attention back to. They do not have a hierarchy of goals to frame and structure their attention to create a better life for themselves. So that is it for this one. Uh, if you want to read the full letter, there's a, a bit more in the actual newsletter I wrote about this. There's a link in the description to read the full thing. This is one of the longest pieces that I've written in a while. Um, we got a lot of good feedback on it, and I feel like you would like to re-read through it if you just want to screenshot stuff, if you found value in this. Uh, but the next thing is just like, subscribe, leave a comment letting me know what your favorite part was. Uh, if you want to learn a in-demand skill, like how I write my content, or create these videos or other things like that, check out the two hour writer. I, I teach you high impact creative writing in a practical sense that helps you build a social media brand for yourself so you can buy back your time and do something that you truly enjoy. If you wanna step up from that to include marketing, sales, promotion systems, check out digital economics. And lastly, if you want a community to kind of tie all this stuff together and just meet new people, like-minded people that you probably don't find in real life. It's pretty hard to find people that actually like talking about this stuff in real life. So if you want that and a strategy library for business, self-improvement, performance, uh, health, and all of that good stuff, check out Mutter Mastery. It's five bucks to join. And with all of that, I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.